Hello everybody, my name is Madison and if you're new to my channel, welcome. I post a bunch of things on this channel. I like plants, I like animals, I like the color pink, I like video games, I like arts and crafts. If you like any of those things and if you like this little fuzzball right here, then feel free to subscribe and leave a nice comment down below and turn on the notification bell, share with your friends, and follow my social media. I'm kind of all over the place. <laughs> Yes, yes I am. Yes I am. This video is not about Kyrie. This video is going to be about bunnies. And the only reason why I don't have a real bunny with me right now is because they're at my fiance's house. And yeah. <laughs> and also, if you see me looking down reading stuff, uh, I have everything jotted down in this notebook. Just to make sure I don't miss anything. And my lighting is horrible today because it's a very gloomy day outside. I tried pointing my grow lights towards me. That's about all I'm going to give you today, alright? I made the cutest little chocolate bombs yesterday with my mom. Okay, I've been hearing a lot of people talk about chocolate bombs. Is this like a new mom Pinterest thing? Because y'all are going crazy over these fucking things and I don't... <laughs> I guess all the spherical molds are sold out. Y'all are y'all are crazy. Why can't you just buy one mold? Why do you have to buy them all? I don't I don't I will never understand you guys. Anyway, <laughs> with all that aside, let's just get into this video. And of course, with a video like this, I need to give a disclaimer. Everything I'm talking about, everything that I am talking about here is based off of my personal experiences and being a rabbit owner. And I am also a veterinary assistant at a vet. Technically not a vet tech because I didn't go to school, but I do a lot of, a lot of the things a vet tech does. And um, so all of this is based off of my personal experience and experience that I have working at the vet. And Everything, anything that I say should not be taken as medical advice and absolutely anything that I say should not ever be taken as a replacement for your yearly checkups with your doctor, okay? So, with all of that out of the way, let's talk about rabbit care. <laughs> oh, first I should probably make my chocolate bomb now. This thing's kind of big. This cup's kind of small, so I guess we'll see. Do you want to watch Kyrie? <laughs> so there's that. Oh, she really wants it, huh? You want that? But drop it in. Oh, oh yeah. <sighs> You're such a good girl. I love you. Okay, so are you just gonna chill like that? That's fine. <laughs> okay, so today. We are talking about rabbit care. So I think rabbits are one of the most neglected animals. I'm like trying to get a grip on you. <laughs> it's hard when you have such a top heavy stuffed animal. Um, okay, so I think that rabbits are one of the most neglected animals and it makes me really, really sad. And I'm really passionate about animal care being what you can give them maximum instead of just settling with the minimum, you know? like. I don't know, like, like that's the reason you have a pet, right? Is you want to give them the biggest, happiest, healthiest life you can. So why would you just settle with the minimum that just because the internet told you? Mm -mm. I don't like that. <laughs> so anyway, let me find my page here. I was hoping you wouldn't see this while I'm reading off of it, but that's okay. That means I'm just prepared, right? I have a whole speech laid out for you, right? And Jan uh, and Kyrie loves the bunnies. Do you love Janice? Where's Janice? Do you love her? <laughs> Janice uh, sometimes gets annoyed with her because she doesn't know when to stop. But anyway, so this is going to be split up into a few categories. So I'm going to have the timestamps up here so that you can skip around and go to where you would like to go. So it's going to be housing and then diet and daily maintenance, monthly maintenance. And that's, yeah. So let's just get started. And that intro was so long. 
Anyway, <laughs> so housing. So in my personal experience, I think that free roaming is the best case scenario that you could possibly do. Give them the biggest amount of space that you can allow, okay? And we have our bunnies free roamed in my fiance's bedroom at his house. And um, so we have like a metal gate that splits the room in half because we just bought a really nice bed and we don't want them chewing it up. Um, so we have the room split in half and they have their half, we have our half and we'll open up our half when we're supervising them and stuff and they can come on the bed with us and things like that. And they love it and we also open the door and we let them explore the whole house when all the cats are put away in a different place where they're all outside, which don't let your cats roam outside, but that's a different conversation for a different day. <laughs> yeah. But the, uh, so if you can't free roam, you can free roam like in a room like we do. You can free roam a section of your house if you would like. You could free roam the whole house <laughs> if your rabbit is capable of finding a bunch of litter boxes and you think they're good up and downstairs and things like that. Or if you have a tiny studio apartment, that would be amazing to free roam a rabbit. But... I digress, I digress. So the next best thing you could do if you are not, if you, I mean, because I understand everyone has different things going on and you can't always do that. So the next best thing I would say would be a playpen. So I can insert an image of playpens that I really like and I will, and any products that I talk about will be linked in the description down below. So you don't have to worry about that. But I, the next best thing I recommend is a playpen. And play pens are really cool because, you know, they're not as expensive as a cage, which never, ever, 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 ever put a rabbit in a cage from <laughs> like PetSmart, Petco, any of those places because they are not big enough. Just because they slap a rabbit on the front of the box does not mean it's made for rabbits. Don't do it. Don't do it. Because what's going to happen is that your rabbit is going to get mean and snippy through the bars and your rabbit is going to be very upset and you're going to think that your rabbit turned aggressive and you're going to get rid of it. That's what happens. Okay? That's what happens. Don't do it. Don't do it. Anyway, <laughs> next best thing is a playpen. Playpens are awesome because they're not that expensive. You can get, like the playpen that we got, we got for like 30 bucks on Amazon. The new one that we got that we're upgrading because we're moving to a different place temporarily for a little bit and we can't free roam them there. But the next playpen that we got, it was like a hundred and it's way higher quality, has like an actual door. But, um, you know, you can shop around in your budget, of course. But, uh, yeah, so, and if you want to get really creative with it, you can buy just like a bunch of cheap playpens. You can buy a few sets of them and make like a huge enclosure as big as you want if you because I, I think one is a little usually a little bit too small I would recommend at least buying like two sets of play pens and connecting them together because you want them to have room even after you add all the stuff into the enclosure which we're going to go into later but yes play pens are awesome um I would set up the play pen rectangularly square circle whatever tickles your fancy and that's it. And I think that's way better than trying to invest in like a cage that is most likely going to be too small. So if you are set on having a cage, which if you are having an enclosed cage, I just think you shouldn't have a rabbit. Sorry. Just saying it how, how it is. But anyway, if you plan on having a fully enclosed cage with a floor and a roof and all of that stuff, um, it must be big enough for your rabbit to hop across a few hops, fully spread out, and stand up all the way on their hind legs. Even after you add hidey houses, litter boxes, and everything like that, they still should be able to do all those things. And the very minimum is 30 by 30 by 24. Just get a playpen. Don't waste your money on fancy cages and things. Just get a playpen. It, like, they'll like it a lot better, I promise. So, and even if you do have them in a fully enclosed cage, 
even if it's as big as you could possibly muster, your rabbit still needs out of cage exercise for six to eight hours a day. That's why free roaming is the best case scenario. I'm sorry, I get really I get really passionate about this stuff, man. I love I love I love my buns. I love my buns. I'm stirring my hot chocolate, I'm sorry. I had an hour left on this memory card and now I'm thinking with the way I'm talking right now, I don't know if I'm gonna be under an hour. And along with housing, I don't recommend keeping your rabbit outside. There are a bunch of things that go into that, but you do not want to expose your rabbit to harsh elements, to predators, and it's just not fun. Um, meat rabbits get raised outside, not pet rabbits, okay? They are your pets, they are your family, okay? Keep them inside, please. Protect them. Um, I also don't recommend rabbit hutches. Um, I just don't like how enclosed they are and they usually have like solid walls. I don't know, I feel like your rabbit wants to see everything. And hutches are built more up instead of out. And rabbits don't really care for going up. They want to be spread out. They want to explore the terrain, not fly, if you know what I'm saying. Ugh. And whatever you do, do not get anything with a wire bottom. Wire bottoms are really, really bad because they can cause sore hocks, and sore hocks are really painful, and once they break open, they can get infected, and it's really nasty. Just avoid wire bottoms. Just avoid cages. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm so anti-cage, but like, ugh. it's a thing. So, inside your rabbit's housing, you should include hidey houses, litter boxes with high sides, fleece blankets, chew toys, and a water bowl. And I recommend a bowl and not a bottle because rabbits can drink just as much water as Kyrie can. I recommend a water bowl, not a bottle, because rabbits can drink the same amount of water that a small to medium sized dog can. And with just water bottles, they will usually get angry that they're not getting enough water in one gulp, so they will just kick the water bottle and that's no fun. You, you want them to be hydrated, right? So give them, just give them a bowl. It's probably cheaper. You probably have a bowl in your house already, you know? <laughs> so anyway, did I cover everything I wanted to with housing? Um, oh, I should probably go over toys. So um, save toys for your rabbits. Um, personally, my rabbits really like cardboard, um, but wood is a good option. Uh, just avoid corn husk at all costs if you can. Avoid like artificial dyes, any inks. So like don't just like take a box that has like Amazon written all over it and give it to them. Um, sticks. Elvis likes sticks. Janice, Janice doesn't really care for toys in general, but if your rabbit is a chewer and likes toys, I recommend wood, cardboard, paper, things like that. Just stick to like more natural materials, you know what I mean? So, diet. So, diet. <laughs> a rabbit's diet should include 80% hay, 12% greens and veggies, 6% pellets, and 2% treats. Okay? So, your most of your rabbit's diet is going to be hay. So, do not cheap out on this. You want to have a good quality hay. We use Oxbow. Oxbow is a good brand. And we also buy locally when we can because we live in kind of a small farm town that's surrounded by corn. So we can buy hay locally in huge batches. Oh my God, Austin bought a 50 pound box of hay. We, we, oh my God. And I couldn't, it was probably super cheap too, just like from a farm near us. And we haven't even chipped into it. <laughs> so yeah, so 80% hay. Um, the hay that I would recommend you feed if your rabbit is over six months of age, because six months is when they're fully grown. After six months of age, I recommend Timothy Orchard Grass. I don't really know much about the other hays. All I know is that alfalfa should really only be fed if your rabbit is very sick, very old, or a baby, because it has 
a lot of other things in it that will make your bunny fat. Science. <laughs> okay, so, and the next is 12% greens and veggies. So you want to avoid feeding um, like high calcium veggies because that can cause urinary things, <laughs> urinary problems. And we went through that with Janice because we were feeding her too much kale and spinach. Like any of those like really dark leafy greens you want to give in smaller quantities because Janice did get a UTI from eating too much spinach. So just watch out for that. But veggies that are good for your rabbit is not, like obviously there's more than this, but these are just the few that I could think of off the top of my head. Romaine, mustard greens, parsley, spinach, cilantro, kale, arugula, carrots, broccoli, bell pepper, celery, but no iceberg lettuce. Just don't give iceberg lettuce. Iceberg lettuce has no, has no nutritional value. It's pretty much just water. And it makes their bellies kind of upset and it makes their poop wet. So I don't recommend that. And then next is 6% pellets. Give one fourth cup per five pounds. And make sure that it's pellets only and none of like the mixes of like treats and things mixed in with it because those treats aren't usually good for them. And obviously they're gonna pick those out first. So give them just pellets. We feed the Oxbow adult rabbit pellets and they love them. They actually scratch on the closet door every morning at 6 a.m. demanding their pellets. And they cannot get enough of them and they will fight each other <laughs> if we don't give it to them at the same exact time. Okay. And then next on the list is 2% treats. So treats can include like <clears throat> pre-packaged treats. Um, I, like we obviously do most things Oxbow brand. That's just the most relatively available brand out there, and their stuff is pretty high quality, I would say. So we like to feed um, like uh, uh, Oxbow makes like a hay like pellet hay treats where they're like in little rings or like little hearts. Um, I've also fed Oxbow treats that had like bell pepper in them. We also like to get the Oxbow like uh, freeze-dried fruit, or of course you can freeze-dry your fruit yourself if you have the capabilities of doing that. Um, what are the treats do we give? That's about it. Yeah, so that's for like pre-packaged treats. And of course you can give fruits as treats to some good fruits are banana, apple, no seeds, all of this, just make sure you don't give them seeds or skins or anything like that. So, uh, we like to give banana, apple, papaya, mango, berries. Um, the bunnies love banana. Banana is just like one of those things that like most rabbits will go crazy for. Okay, so next we're gonna go on maintenance. So I'm gonna go over daily maintenance, weekly ma maintenance, and monthly maintenance for a rabbit. Just that, like, I don't know. Before I got my rabbit, I wish I knew how much really went into them. So I'm gonna go over what me and Austin do on a daily basis, a monthly basis, a weekly basis. Just so that you can get a heads up, so that you can decide for yourself if you have the time, the energy, and the lifestyle to be able to do all these things. Okay, so daily maintenance includes refilling the hay, giving them fresh water, picking up any poops, enrichment, playtime, exercise, brushing if your rabbit has long hair or is in a molt or a shed. And um, we usually don't do this because our Elvis will chew up the toys, but Janice has never really been into toys, so we just kind of leave the toys out for Elvis to chew on. But if your rabbit does like toys but gets bored of them quickly, I recommend getting like a basket or a box of toys and cycling them out every day and putting the ones that are currently all out away and placing them with different ones just to keep them interested. So weekly maintenance includes changing and cleaning the litter box. So it's up to you how often you want to change the litter box. Um, we change our litter box like once a week, twice a week maybe. You could change the litter box every day if you want to, but that would just be way too much. 
Um, so changing and cleaning the litter box. So we dump it out, we clean it, with dish soap, we scrub it down, we rinse it out, we dry it, the whole shebang. And on a weekly basis, I also try to wash the blankets, wash all their blankets. I recommend that you use a fleece blankets even if you have carpet because um, carpet can be a little abrasive on their paws, especially like, you know, just like different kinds of carpet and stuff. Please blanket is just easy to come by. Probably have some in your house already. Just throw them on the floor. They will be happy. Um, washing blankets, vacuuming and dusting the room. I don't, if you've never had a rabbit before, there's nothing I can tell you to prepare for the amount of hair that's going to come out of a little five pound body. Okay, it's going to take over your room your space, your whatever, dust is going to be replaced by hair, everything's going to be re replaced by hair, you're going to be breathing hair, that's just how it goes, okay, especially if you have a long-haired rabbit like we do, Janice, Janice's hair is just a bomb, it's just a bomb, <laughs> so washing blankets is a must if you would like to keep the hair as controlled as possible, okay? And dusting. Dusting is very important. You don't want your air quality to get bad because of hair because we have gotten to that point before and it's not fun. And um, on a weekly basis, brushing is a must on all types of rabbits. If you have a short-haired rabbit, long-haired rabbit, anything, I at least brush their hair once a week. If you have a long-haired rabbit, daily brushings are needed, especially if you have an Angora, Jersey Wooly, anything like that those guys are going to need daily brushings. But I, if you're getting your first rabbit, I don't recommend you get an, an Angora or a Jersey Wooly, maybe not even a lion head like I did, because I was not prepared for the amount of hair that I was going to have to deal with. And then monthly maintenance includes nail trims, rearranging furniture just to keep things interesting, throwing, like going through and throwing, throwing away chewed up toys, and cleaning their glands. <laughs> So, we personally trim our rabbit's nails. You could bring them somewhere, but that could be a little bit more stressful. Um, trimming rabbit's nails are a lot easier when you have someone there to help you. I have also done it on my own. Um, if you are having trouble trimming rabbit's nails or you just are intimidated by it, it's really not that big of a deal. What I would recommend is to bring your rabbit to a different room because if you try to wrangle them up and force them to do something they obviously don't want to do in their own space, they are going to fight back because they know the places that they can run and hide, okay? And they're comfortable in that space. So you have to take them out of their comfort zone so that they won't know what to do, where to go. They will just literally sit and let you do what you need to do because they are scared. <laughs> So yeah, and I try to keep it really fast. I take them to a different room, bop, 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 throw them back. Um, obviously it'll get faster the more you do it, but yeah. And the way I've done it on my own is I would bring Janice to my basement, set her on a table with a flashlight, and I would pick up each paw, put the flashlight under her paw, clip the nail, and then go to each foot and do it that way. When I have Austin helping me, Austin will wrangle up the bunnies for me. He's the holder and I'm the cutter. Okay, and while he's holding the bunnies, he will also have like a flashlight in his hand and like shine down on the bunnies' paws for me. And I would recommend if you are going to be doing any animal's nails by yourself that you invest in a little um, bottle, jar, jar. A little jar of quick stop. It's a powder that if you get too close to their quick and they start bleeding, you can apply that powder to the nail and it kind of, like it stings for a second but then it just numbs the area, it doesn't hurt anymore and it clots the blood and makes it stop. So, very good to have, just in case. <laughs> um, I think I think that's everything. I mean, obviously this is just a really vague, um, this is a very vague care guide. This is just kind of broadly going over everything because in my opinion, the most important things are housing, 
food, and maintenance. Everything else can be up to your personal interpretation. Your rabbit is your rabbit. You can love them, take care of them, however you want. Just make sure you have the right housing, the right diet, and make sure that you are maintaining them because apart, as much as it sucks, we all have to do things we don't want to do. And a part of loving your animal and giving them the best life you can is by doing the stuff you don't want to do. <laughs> okay, you have to trim their nails. You have to brush them. Even if they don't like it, it's for their own good, okay? Because you are the animal parent and you are in charge and you have to take responsibility, okay? But really, rabbits are amazing, and they're really not that hard once you have the setup. Like, I personally think rabbits are super low maintenance once you kind of get the routine down, you know? And rabbits are especially awesome if you work or go to school during the day, because rabbits sleep during the day. So, how I did it, because I got Janice when I was in high school, and how I did it during that is I would wake up in the morning, I would let them out while I got ready, and they could run around, go crazy, do whatever. I would put Janice back, go to school. She would sleep while I was at school. I would come home and let her out until I went to sleep. And I think that is a really awesome routine to have. And obviously, there's just so many reasons why free roaming your rabbit is amazing. And one of the reasons is you become a lot closer with your rabbit once you share living quarters with them. And it's just really awesome to see your rabbit's attitude and personality when they're like in their full relaxed state, <laughs> you know. But yeah, I think that's everything. Um, obviously, if you have any questions or if you want me to go more in depth in a different video, because obviously I can't put everything there is to know about rabbits in one video or else I won't have more content to film so you know <laughs> so if you have any other questions concerns if you want me to go more in detail about a particular thing let me know and I will be more than happy to do that for you uh, make sure you send this to anybody who you know has a rabbit that maybe has questionable care or you know somebody who's getting a rabbit this, these are all very important things to know. And no matter what you do, if you have a rabbit, getting a rabbit, this is just, this goes for all animals in general. Never stop doing your research. You should never just stop after you hear my or another person's information. You read one article, no, no. Animal care is always progressing, it's always changing, and you should always be doing research. Because things in the rabbit community, not rabbit community, in the pet community change all the time. And obviously this is being filmed in 2020, so things could very much change in the future. But yeah, that's, that's all I have to say, really. Um, of course, if you liked this video, like it. Duh. And leave a nice comment. If you have bunnies, I would love to know everything about them. Feel free to subscribe to my channel, turn on the notification bell, and follow me on all my social media. Alrighty. Thank you so much for clicking on my video. I'm so, so happy. If you made it through all the way, leave me a pink heart emoji. And you guys have an amazing rest of your day. Um, when I'm filming this, it's going to be two days before Thanksgiving. So if you celebrate Thanksgiving, I hope you had an amazing holiday. And I will see you in my next one. Bye!